In this video, we're going to take a look at the quotient rule. So let's just say we have a curve here, which is y is equal to f of x all over g of x. Okay. So what I have here is a quotient of functions. And to differentiate this here and get dy by dx, we need to use a special method, and that method is the quotient rule. So in this case here, if we differentiate this, we get dy by dx. So to differentiate something like this here, a quotient of functions, then what I'm going to get is g of x multiplied by f prime of x. We then subtract f of x multiplied by g prime of x. So minus f of x multiplied by g prime of x. And then this is all divided by g of x squared. We divide all of this here by g of x squared. Okay. Now, in the previous video, when we had a look at the product rule, we did use the notation for u and v. I'm going to do the same here for the quotient rule. It's nothing different to what we've just done there. It's just a quicker way of expressing the quotient rule here. If I have y is equal to u over v, where u and v are my two functions here, and I can differentiate it again. And again, I'm going to get dy by dx here. And that will be equal to v u prime, so v multiplied by u prime, minus u v prime, so minus u v prime. We just divide this here by v squared. Okay. Now it's just a quicker way of expressing the quotient rule here, rather than using this function notation, but they are equivalent, and both would give you the correct solution there for the derivative. Okay. That's all we need there for our introduction to the quotient rule. What we're going to do now is take a look at a few practice questions for the quotient rule. So we start off with question one here, we've been given the curve C, which has this equation. Now we're asked to show that dy by dx is equal to a over x plus 5 all squared, where a is an integer to be found. Now our original curve here, the equation for this curve, y equals 3x minus 1 over x plus 5, that's a quotient of functions. So to differentiate here and get dy by dx, we're going to need to use the quotient rule. We need to define u and v here. So remember u is the numerator, so that's 3x minus 1. And v here is the denominator, so that's going to be x plus 5. Now to use the quotient rule, we also need u prime and v prime. So I'll differentiate 3x minus 1 with respect to x, that would simply give me 3. Do the same here with v, so I'm going to get v prime and differentiate x plus 5 here with respect to x, and that would simply give me 1. So we've got everything we need now. Let's just recall the formula here for the quotient rule. So dy by dx will be given as v multiplied by u prime. That's v u prime minus now u v prime minus u v prime. And then this is all divided here by v squared. Okay. All I need to do now is put everything in here. So what have we got? Well, v u prime. That's going to be x plus 5 multiplied by 3. So we get 3 lots of x plus 5. We then minus u v prime. So u is 3x minus 1. Multiply that by 1. So it's just going to be minus 3x minus 1 there. And this is all divided by v squared. So v is x plus 5. We divide that by x plus 5 all squared. So what we need to do now is just simplify here, because we want to show that it's equal to a over x plus 5 all squared. So in that case then, what I've got then is 3x plus 5 minus 3x minus 1. So just expand this bracket here. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 5 is 15. We've then got minus 3x here. And then I've got minus minus 1 giving me plus 1. So do take care with that minus sign here. So minus of a minus becomes positive. And this is all divided by x plus 5 squared. So if we just simplify the numerator here, 3x minus 3x, they just disappear, or they just cancel. I've got 15 plus 1. So I get 16 over x plus 5 squared there. Okay. And notice that's of the form that we need here. So in that case then, therefore a must be equal to 16. 
And there we have it, so that's our solution to question one. Moving on to question two now, where we've got the function f here, which is defined as f of x, which is equal to e to the x over e to the x minus three, where x belongs to the real numbers, but x cannot be equal to the natural logarithm of three. Now we're asked to find the value of the gradient at the point where x is equal to the natural logarithm of four. So straight away, because we've been asked to find the value of the gradient here, we know we need to use differentiation. And because I have a quotient of functions here, we're also going to need to use the quotient rule. So I now need to define u and v. So remember u here is the numerator, that will be e to the x. v here is the denominator, so that's going to be e to the x minus 3. And we also need u prime and v prime. So u prime, that means we need to differentiate e to the x here with respect to x. So in that case, that will simply be e to the x. And same again here. So for v prime, we need to differentiate e to the x minus 3 with respect to x. And again, we're going to get e to the x. So hopefully all nice and straightforward up to now. So to differentiate here, we need to use the quotient rule. So let's just recall the formula. So f prime of x here, because we're using function notation, so that's going to be v multiplied by u prime, so v u prime. We now subtract u multiplied by v prime. And we divide all of this here by v squared. Okay. So we put all of this together over here then. So f prime of x here for this question. It's going to be v multiplied by u prime. So v is e to the x minus 3. Multiply that with u prime here, which is e to the x. I'm going to get e to the x multiplied by e to the x minus 3. We then subtract u v prime. So u is e to the x. v prime is also e to the x. That's going to be minus e to the x squared, essentially. So that's e to the x multiplied by e to the x. And then we divide all of this here by v squared. So e to the x minus 3, all squared. Okay. So we simplify the numerator here. e to the x multiplied by e to the x. So like we said, that's e to the x squared. So in that case, just multiply the power there. So that would be e to the x squared. So e to the x times e to the x. So it's e to the x squared. In that case, a power raised to another power, that would simply be e to the 2x. That's going to be e to the 2x. We then have e to the x multiplied by minus 3. So that's going to give me minus 3e to the x. Minus 3e to the power of x. We've then got minus e to the x multiplied by e to the x. So again, in this case, we're going to get minus e to the 2x there. Okay, and that's all over. Our denominator here, we won't expand this here. We don't need to, it just creates more work for ourselves. So e to the x minus 3 all squared. So here, just simplify the numerator again. So e to the 2x minus e to the 2x. That'll be 0. So I get left here with minus 3e to the power of x all over e to the x minus 3 squared. So that's f, of, uh, sorry, f prime of x here. That's f prime of x. And we need the value of the gradient at the point where x is equal to the natural logarithm of 4. We need f prime of ln of 4. So f prime of ln of 4. So all I need to do here now is substitute ln of 4 to this expression here. So I'm going to get minus 3e e the ln of 4. And that's all over e to the ln of 4 minus 3 all squared. So here at this point now we need to use the properties of exponentials and logarithms. So in this case then e to the natural logarithm of 4, so e and the natural logarithm, they're the inverse of each other, so they're going to cancel. I'm going to get minus 3 times 4, that's my numerator. So the denominator now is e to the ln 4, again, they'll cancel, so I'm going to get 4 minus 3 all squared. So I'm going to get minus 3 times 4, so that's minus 12. 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's 1 squared. So 1 squared is obviously 1, so I get minus 12 over 1, giving me minus 12 there. Okay, so the value of the gradient at the point where x is equal to the natural logarithm of 4 
is minus 12. And that gives us a solution to question two. Taking a look now at the last question here to finish with, where it says using the quotient rule, differentiate e to the x over sine x with respect to x. If we're using the quotient rule here, we need to define u and v. So u here is the numerator, so that's e to the x. And v here is our denominator, which in this case will be sine x. Now remember, if we're using the quotient rule here, we also need u prime and we also need v prime. So u prime, differentiate e to the x with respect to x. In that case, we'll simply get e to the x again. And if we differentiate sine x here with respect to x, in that case, we're going to get cosine x. Okay. We've got everything we need here to find the derivative dy by dx. Let's just recall the formula then using the quotient rule. In this case, it's going to be v multiplied by u prime. So v u prime, we then subtract u multiplied by v prime. So u v prime, and we divide all of this here by v squared. So if we put all of that now into practice here, to find dy by dx here, in that case then, v multiplied by u prime, so that's sine x multiplied by e to the x. So we're going to get e to the x sine x. We then subtract u v prime, so u is e to the x, multiply that by cosine x, we minus e to the x cos x there, okay? And we now divide all of this here by v squared, so if v is sine x, that's going to be divided by sine squared x there, okay? Now we could technically leave our solution like that, that is the derivative there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor this e to the x out here in the numerator. Just makes it look a little bit cleaner. So I can factor the e to the x out here. So I'm going to get e to the x multiplied now by sine x minus cos x. So sine x minus cos x. And that's all going to be over sine squared x there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution. So that's the derivative there of e to the x over sine x using the quotient rule. So that brings us to the end of this video on the quotient rule. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some further differentiation where we now actually differentiate the um, reciprocal trig functions.